Good evening and welcome to our campfire worship tonight as we gather together around the Word and the Spirit. This is our prayer as people find us. celebrate the end of the fighting and the ensuing freedom and peace and justice. So tonight we open with this prayer. Let us pray. God of peace, we pray for those who have served our nation and have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought whose spirits and bodies are now scarred by war, and we pray for those who serve us now, especially for those in harm's way. Shield them from danger and bring them home. Turn the hearts and minds of all of our leaders and all of our enemies to the work of justice and a harvest of peace. May the peace that you left us be the peace that sustains us. Amen. Well, good evening. Welcome to this campfire worship service. As I said, my name is Pastor Jeff Engholm. Grateful to be here serving this congregation and grateful to be here with you tonight. Also glad that Dana Brasper is here with us tonight singing and playing guitar. Also grateful that Robin Behrens is here with us running all the cameras and the technology behind the scenes tonight. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, feel free to check in below, you know, on those boxes or click those buttons there. And if you're not, just we're glad you're here joining us here for this worship service. If you want a bulletin for this service, you can find it on our website, trend.org. Right on the front page, just scroll down to worship online. It says something like that. Uh, we're always modifying it a little bit, but you'll find it there. You can see a bulletin. But you don't have to have that. We'll leave you alone tonight with everything you need to do. Um, there's also a Sharing God's Story piece that you'll find also on that little, uh, uh, at that place. You can find that. It has little readings and prayers and conversation starters. So pull it up if you want to just dig deeper into our uh, service here tonight. Tonight we're gathering under the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life continues to be letting go of its leaves, and turn, well, winter's coming here, like most of the trees and leaves outside, 
We have our Tree of Life t-shirts on. Dana has his own on there too. We're the Tree of Life band, I guess, tonight here playing for you. I'm glad you're joining us as a part of this bigger Tree of Life that we gather under. Tonight our story is the story of Jonah. You know, the story of the guy swallowed by a whale. But you know what also happened in that story? As he was down there in the deep, he was washed. He was washed in the waters of the deep blue sea. Just like we are washed in the waters of baptism. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood? sharing God's story at home, you might have that sheet in your hand, or maybe you found it online, you can find it later, we have some here at Trinity you can pick up, it's called Sharing God's Story, it asks 
Well, a couple of questions. First, what were the highs and the lows of this past week? In particular, what was something that you were a part of, something that you really did not want to miss? What's something that you were a part of that was great? And what was something else that you did have to miss this week that you wish you wouldn't have had to miss? There's also a service challenge in uh, on, on the Sharing God's Story Sheet. It's about showing God's love in all the ways we can do that. How are you going to do that this week with someone? Showing God's love to somebody else. Something else to think about and talk about with your people, with your God squad. We're all in our groups, all in our God squads. Wherever we are, we have organized ones on Sunday mornings with our Sunday school kids. We have some going on right now with our confirmation kids. And you, whoever you're with, that's your God squad. So talk about these things there. And here's a quick word for our confirmation God squads because you're listening for the secret word for tonight, for part of your confirmation assignment. The secret word for tonight is belly. The secret word is belly. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. The whale was taking him to a place he didn't want to go. But it was a place where God wanted him to go. And he was safe inside there, protected, as God took him to where God wanted him to go, in the belly of the whale. That's the secret word for tonight, the belly. So as you're talking about those things, here's our song about having deep roots in our faith, in the life and the love of God. from Jonah, the book of Jonah, the very first chapter. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. But Jonah set out to flee away from the presence of the Lord and found a ship going in the opposite direction. But a mighty storm came upon the sea, and the sailors were afraid, and they said to Jonah, What is this that you have done? What shall we do that the sea may quiet down for us? Jonah said to them, Throw me overboard, and then the sea will quiet down for you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased its raging. And the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. This is the word of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God Almighty, the one who empowers us for faithful living and changing lives. Amen. So, you know the story, 
Jonah got swallowed up by a huge fish. He got swallowed up by a huge fish because he was being rebellious. And he was running away from God. But now tonight, as I hear this story, on this day in particular, I have to admit that I'm feeling just like that. I'm feeling right now like I have just been swallowed up by a huge fish. And I don't think I'm being rebellious at all. But did you hear the news yesterday? At least those of you who live here in Minnesota, the conference from the Capitol. The news that we're going to be slowing things down with regard to our opening up plan, you know, in the midst of the COVID. I'm feeling like I've been swallowed up by a huge fish. I'm sitting inside the fish. I suppose I've been there for a while already, surrounded by all the COVID, and I can and I can kind of see out the mouth of the fish. And it looked like the mouth of the fish was beginning to open up. And I could kind of see, you know, through the teeth there, and I could see my way out of this situation. But now the mouth is closing again. We've just been told the new rules about, you know, the restaurants and the bars and the social events and churches. And the new rules basically say this. Smaller gatherings. Fewer gatherings. Shorter gatherings. If you're going to have any gatherings at all which is not a good idea. And so we are, here we are, stuck in the belly of this whale. I'm sure more will be said in the news in the coming days, all the details, all the things we have to do and not do. I am not <laughs> happy about it. Nobody is. But I also know this. That in the coming days, we're going to hear other stories. More stories as well. This piece about the diving bag of the safe, safe program, it'll probably be there, right alongside all that other news that we've been hearing about in these past days. Record numbers of cases of the COVID that just keep going up and up. Hospitals. Hospitals, they're at 90 plus percent capacity. Don't have enough space. Don't have enough staff. Don't have enough supplies. And then, if the days ahead are like just these past days, I'll probably watch the news on TV, like I did earlier today. And I'll listen again to the hospital workers pleading with us. That's what it feels like to me. Pleading with us to keep our distance, to wear the face masks, and, you know, do all the things in order to keep the infection numbers as low as possible as possible. And then in the days ahead, I'll probably get another email from one of my parishioners, like I did just the other day, who sent me a note about his brother-in-law getting the COVID and passing away four days ago after attending a funeral. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so graphic, but these are the stories that we're all hearing now, right? I don't think I'm saying anything that we don't already know. And when I hear all these stories and I see how the COVID is impacting 
hospitals and doctors and nurses and impacting our own members and our own families and friends, when I hear those stories, it makes me not want to shake my fist at these new rules, but it actually helps me kind of get it. And it actually makes me want to open my hand and my heart and my mind to see if I can help out in any way. Which actually, I can. By keeping myself as safe as possible, by keeping those around me as safe as possible, and by encouraging all those folks to do the same. When I think of the story of Jonah, I think of this defiant man stubbornly rebelling against God. And I think that that's what the story is all about. And it is partly about that. But that's not what all the story is about. Do you know what the name Jonah literally means? No, the name Jonah does not mean the defiant one. The name Jonah does not mean the stubborn one. The name Jonah does not mean rebellious. The name Jonah literally means dove. Jonah means dove. A symbol of peace and patience. The story of Jonah isn't so much about Jonah being stubborn and defiant. It's much more about God using Jonah as an instrument of peace, in spite of himself, as an instrument and a symbol of peace and patience brought to the people he was called to speak to. Now, I need to be very clear, God did not send the COVID to swallow us up and disrupt our lives. That is not what I am saying. I am saying that God is not ignoring our situation, but that God is actually with us in this and helping us, helping to pull us through. And God is doing just that. Take a look. Just pull yourself now out of this one day and take a look at the days to come. Take a look at the better days ahead. We know that the virus is working its way through our communities and that it will eventually run out of steam. And we know that there is a vaccine that's on the way in the coming months. And we know that even though we can't gather together now, physically, in large groups, we can gather together briefly, in smaller groups, mostly outside, where it is safer. And we also know that we can gather in unlimited numbers right now. Through this, through what we are doing right now, through however you join us here in this gathering, wherever, whenever you are, we gather like this in unlimited ways. Because you know what the chances of you getting the COVID right now through this exchange? It is zero. <laughs> There is zero chance that you're going to get the COVID through this right now. So here we go. We're all in this together. We'll gather however we can through our tablets or computers or cell phones. We'll support each other however we can from whatever distance we have to do it. And we will be Jonah the Dove. We will be that dove for everybody around us, bringing peace, bringing patience, 
bringing courage, bringing hope. Because through the mouth of that big fish that we're sitting in, there truly is light at the end of that time. Amen. In the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's a song about Jonah and about you and me.
Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There's a song written many years ago, about our lives together, no matter what happens, all the ups and downs, they're just, they're very short. The psalm is, uh, our, excuse me, it's from the Old Testament, from Isaiah, all life is grass, our lives wither and perish, but the word of God, our life in God, lasts forever. This song is about that and our life together.
that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining us here tonight. Thanks to David and Robin for being here with us tonight. We'll see you Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. for our Sunday morning worship service. And in the meantime, stay calm, stay connected, and shine on. <laughs>